Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Camelot Smite League. We got a Lancelot Division matchup coming your way this afternoon between the Order of the Blight and the Cyberpunk Otters. To bring you all that action, I am Dr. Shrew, joined by Chubby Chibi with Soulslaw on the production. And as we get ready to hop into picks and bands here, Chibi, how are you feeling going into this match? Yeah, I'm feeling, you know, this is going to be a little bit of an odd one. Um, we got a lot of flexing and positions going around here. Zelda, who's been a consistent uh, player for Cyberpunk Otters, is going into the jungle. Um, that's going to be a little hard for them. I feel like they really need his consistency there in the mid, especially since they're missing their ADC already as well. So this is going to be an interesting set. I'm actually very excited to see it. The solo lane is going to be a great brawl. Um, we got a round forward and paradox there. So who's here is missing, and so is Steiner. Uh, we got a mid battle going on with Scary Creep, who's been a great player this entire season. Uh, we're going to see how Hemro's Catboy kind of like holds himself uh, when it comes to that fight. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually really excited to see how this turns out with these rosters. So now yeah, we got I... these first rounds of bands going. Um, how, do you want to talk about these a little bit? Yeah, it's fairly standard for the most part. Otter's taking away the Ravana and the Martikaris. We're so used to seeing those. The Baba Yaga getting taken off the board. The Yorm, even Ganesh is something we see too often. But my eyes go to Order of the Blight's first ban there. The Eshel getting taken off the board. Why do you think Eshel is worthy of a ban here so early in the draft? I mean, Eshel, if put in the right hands, can be a very dangerous character in this game. Oh. Her ultimate is not one to kind of sleep on. You get a lot of healing, a lot of damage out of there. Basically being able to do both at the same time, it's maybe just not a god they want to play against. Um, I assume they did some research and found uh, that maybe that's just a dangerous god they just want to take away early, not even have to worry about it. But we got a first pick here with the Kali locked in for Order of the Blight. Yeah, that is that is a scary first overall. Kali is such a menace in the jungle right now. You're able to hyper carry once you get some levels and some items online with those chainsaw autos. So great start Hachiman. for Order of the Blight with their draft. But otters are going to answer back with the Hachiman as their first overall. Not a, not someone who you know is on the same level as the Martikaris, but it seems like regardless of the nerfs he's gotten in recent patches, Hachiman is just uh, kind of a staple right now yeah absolutely i mean we all know and we can all agree that what they did to hachiman made him very powerful made him over op in this game so these the recent nerfs that he got i think it just brought him back down to the level he's still very strong but that attack speed buff that he has on his passive now is just a great addition to have when you're on this team especially with the current meta and how you're just building that armor penetration so that attack speed can go a long way especially being able to get it for free now they lock in as their support terra i mean this is just a great support pick you really had terra and yamoja available with that ganesha ban unless they were looking at a um a kuzumbo here but it seems like they've locked in the terra they're going to go with that extra cc a little bit of healing there and on the order of blight we're locking in their adc with ishtar and it looks like we got Ares being hovered over. Ares would be such a fun pick for the support here for Frag O'Clock. Not a pick we see all too often in the season of Souls, but I mean, Ares does Ares things regardless of what the meta is. He's going to burn your beads, right? He's going to blink in and just do so much damage with both his alt and the chains plus the fire. Uh, I wouldn't hate this lock-in for Order of the Blight. Do you feel like as they do lock it in, do you feel like it pairs well with the Ishtar and the Kali? I think it definitely pairs well with the Ishtar. Um, absolutely the Kali, if you can get those that ult to pull off. Um, what this Ares is going to look to do is exactly what you said. It's going to either burn beads, and if they don't have beads up, they're going to be punished for that. So now this Hachiman and that Terra and that Duo lane, they're going to have to make sure that they have beads and they're careful when they do not have their beads online. Because this Ares... Ishtar and Kali Trio will get double kills off of that consistently if they do not have their beads up. Yeah, lot, lots of bead pressure because Ishtar can pull beads as well with her alt. Kali has a stun that once cool. she has some items online, you definitely don't want to sit through because she's just going to absolutely burn you. So definitely a game plan already kind of forming on the side of the Order of the Blight. But the Otters will lock in Kakullin rounding out their front line to pair up with the Terra, making sure that they get that solo lane pick of choice for a round forward. 
How do you feel about the Otters' top three as a whole? I think their top three is absolutely solid for what they're looking to do. Cullen is a dive monster right now with his two transformation forms, the double ultimate. If you if you time his rage perfectly, he can be a menace for a backline. And it's really interesting to see how the Cyberpunk Otters went for a duo lane and a front line, while the Order of Blight, they had to grab that Kali with their first pick. So they're very confident here that their Trixie Dreams jungle is going to be very important with that Kali. Yeah, a lot of pressure put put on to Trixie because Kali is definitely someone you need to perform if you're going to pick her in the jungle. As we move into second phase of Bayon, Cyberpunk Otters are going to take away the Tear and the Agni. While Order of the Blight off to take this Merlin off the board. Seems like we got mid lane focus for both of these teams coming through. I, I, I tend to like that, especially with the Morgan Le Fay coming through, getting banned as well. You know, make these mid laners kind of go a little deeper into the god pool because with the changes to the item nerfs and the way that mid feels right now, kind of, you know, banning out mid can really make an impact in this game. Yeah. You. Agni, uh, not many of these teams have Agni in their history. It doesn't, it didn't seem like many of them played him, but he might have been banned out in most of those games. But Morgan Le Fay seems to be very consistent for these two teams. So that is actually a great ban on their side, regardless if Zelda is in the mid or in the jungle or not. Um, but it seems like Cyberpunk Otters are going to hover over the rat Fantastic. here. The, there they go. They actually lock it in. This is a very interesting pick. It kind of supports that dive uh, on their team that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, it does. Rat is so good at getting into the back line. And it seems like that's the direction Zelda's wanting to go now that he's in that jungle role for this game. Both Cullen and Rat should be able to just kind of get back on that Ishtar and whoever they decide to lock in with mid. And even Terra's got that ranged CC in her kit to kind of help add to that. What do you want to see kind of picked up by Order of the Blight to counteract the dive paired up with the Ares? Well, I was about to say that Order of the Blight, I feel like they're going to go Poseidon or Scylla here. Um, we've seen some Poseidon. success with Scary Creep on both of those champions, and they lock in the Poseidon. This Poseidon pick is just great their kit order of the blight there's so much cc so much detrimental abilities that they have which cyberpunk otters i think are just gonna have a lot of trouble achilles. dealing with and then our last lock in is achilles in the solo lane who is just gonna be a backline menace for them yeah this is this is looking like a scary team out of order of the blight you can get pulled in by the Ares, hit by a kraken if that doesn't kill you you can get executed or just ran at by Kali or Ishtar. I, I really like this draft out of Order of the Blight, and I'm trying to, I'm kind of scratching my head here. What can Cyberpunk Otters lock in to kind of keep up with it? Or maybe a better question, do you think Scylla is the call into what Blight have drafted so far? Well, I mentioned Scylla for Order of the Blight, so it looks like Poseidon and Scylla are both going to be in this game. Now, <laughs> to me, this Scylla pickup is a... Uh, it's, it's a little risky, I think. Um, she's able to get in there, but with how heavy their jungle and soul lane are going to be diving, um, I, it's going to be interesting to see how well this Scylla pulls off her ult. Great clear. I think Scylla has better clear than Poseidon for these objectives, so maybe that's what they're going for here with mid. Um, but it's going to be an interesting battle, this Scylla against this Poseidon in mid. Yeah, it is. I and mean, you mentioned objectives. Both of them have you know, fairly good secures there in the mid lane, both Kraken and I'm a monster. If they're not both on the in the lobby are usually considered the best secures, in, you know, on the map. And are you saying that you think I'm a monster is, is going to come out on top around objectives? Should they both time them kind of well? I think they're both going to try and work on timing them a little well. We haven't seen Catboy be playing mid too much. He is a sub for the Cyberpunk Otters. So Scary Creep is going to have the experience there, and he's been very good at securing these objectives. Um, so it might be a battle of who can hit their ult to secure an objective first. <laughs> yeah, this, I feel like this, this match has so much potential for what we can see. And I'm going to ask you the hard question now. We can see right, the full five-man drafts of both of them. Who do, you think, who do you think came away ahead out of the draft phase? Who's going to win game number one here between these squads? I... When it comes down to winning game one, I'm not too sure. I think Order of, the, Order of the Blight has the advantage here. I think their draft is actually really good. You were talking about that. 
so much CC potential with this Ares, with the Ishtar, with the Poseidon, and now adding in Achilles and Kali who can just burn people down and consistently live as long as she's killing her mark. This is actually a very scary team to go against. It, it definitely is, and there's only one way to find out who's going to come out ahead. It's to hop into game one here, see what happens on the battlefield of the gods. And I have a feeling with how intense this Order of the Blight draft is, this game is going to get pretty chaotic. There's going to be lots of intense moments, but for now we have a moment to breathe as we wait for buffs to spawn, and it gives us a chance to kind of, you know, take things in, look at the builds that we kind of see these teams going for. Is there anything that stands out to you immediately as, like, interesting or noteworthy that's getting picked up? Uh, off the bat, no. Everything seems very... No, actually, wait a second. We got Poseidon building into jungle starter hmm. here very interesting i almost missed that i just caught that now all right so scary creep is going for this late game build with boomba's hammer i'm assuming unless he's going to go the opposite way for that uh extra objective secure how does how does boomba's hammer or spear i i, I guess work on on a mid laner what what is the the reason in behind that now what i'm hoping and what i'm thinking he's going for is here he wants that extra cooldown but he doesn't want to build it into his actual kit from the mage items so that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that he's kind of looking ahead to what items he wants to build against this cyberpunk otters team but it looks like we got some fighting going on over here in the solo lane with achilles being low getting pressured out by that around forward kukulain yeah kukulain once he has that transformation always going to do so much damage there in the early game but Seems like Paradox is able to withstand the pressure and even turn around quite a bit. But in the mid lane, Zelda's low on the Ratatoska as well. Lots of little scraps here just a minute into the game, but no blood spilled quite yet. Absolutely. And we can see that Zelda is going to be going for the Acorn build of this Ratatoska. Oh. And he goes down. Zelda goes down from Scary Creep. They pick up the poke, getting him just at the last minute and taking these mid rights. Yeah, that is not what you want if you're the Cyberpunk Otters giving Scary Creep that early advantage. He's looked so good on this Poseidon before. And I mean, Zelda's, you know, he's on, he's off rolling right now in the jungle. Just, it's just hard for them to, uh, to make stuff happen there in the mid, la mid lane early on. Absolutely. And if you look at it, the mid lane for the Order of Blight is actually there pretty well. And now we got a gank coming over here. Zelda is trying to get on the solo lane Achilles. But it seems Acorns. like they're not going to be able to pick it up. Yep, absolutely. He didn't get the stun off. But you know what? He's going to be able to get that extra farm right here with that uh, cooldown buff. Um, but meanwhile, the mid and jungle were for Order of the Blight were able to grab the mid lefts. So they secured both mid rights and mid lefts right now. So they have a little bit of a gold advantage here. Nova Shark getting aggressive even with the low health. Dash is in. No, he has the help of his Ares, who's able to do so much damage in the early. But look at this solo lane again, and Paradox will get dropped as Dave gets a kill in the duel lane as well. Action everywhere on the map right now. Cyberpunk Otters pick up their second kill of the game, and they're looking for more. Nova Shark has the dash to be able to make it out safely. Seems like the Midnight might not be going the way of the Otters, but the rest of the map is at least for the moment. Absolutely, and we got Zelda rotating over as well. He's not looking, he's looking to pick up this kill. It doesn't seem like Nova Shark is backing off, so Zelda is going to kind of creep over here, and he might steal his purple over here as well. He's looking to counter farm a little bit. Ares is going to try and hold it off as best as he can, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to stop it. He is able to secure it, though. Good rotation into nice. Frag and Clock to make sure that that XP stays on the side of Order of the Blight. But all of the pressure seems to be going the way of the Cyberpunk Otters over there in that dual lane. But Trixie's looking for an invade of his own, and that one will be successful, taking away that red buff from Catboy on the Scylla. Absolutely, and that was perfect timing for Trixie. You saw that the rat was invading the purple, so what do you do as the opposite jungler? If you're on the right side of the map, you move over there and you find out what else can I counter. You got to make that one-for-one -one trade. So actually, Cyberpunk's... Otters lost that because Zelda did not secure the purple. Frag was able to make that rotation, steal it from him, um, and then Trixie was also able to steal the red. Yeah, working out in their favor with those invades for Order of the Blight. 
as the teams continue to farm up, you know, we've seen it's been fairly action packed here in the first four minutes. We've seen quite a bit of scraps, quite a bit of duels in these various lanes. But if if this goes the way that a lot of matches in the Season of Souls end up going, you know, the 30, the 40, the 50 minute long absolute <laughs> bangers that we see with long fire giant dances, who do you think has the advantage when it comes late game? Because you might have to hold that thought as Ares pulls in one mounted archery is used just to try to make them back off. But the Terra is very low. Dave is trying to make it out, getting burned by the flames and will just barely be able to make it back under the tower. And we have a game going on in mid. Terrace Zelda is staying. going in in mid. Zelda is going in on this Poseidon while I'm a monster misses, but Zelda might be able to pick up this pill. Has him low. Dashes in and takes the kill on Scary Creep in the mid. Great rotation by Zelda. But now Poseidon is actually getting jumped on, and we have Scylla going down. So each jungler picks up one kill on the mid laner. Yeah, mid for mid trade there does end up making things fairly even, but with the low health bar over here as well the execute does a land and paradox we'll get credit for that kill zelda's getting chased underneath the tower trixie dreams takes a lot of poke from the tower has that destruction ultimate though if they would have needed it but it seems like these teams are not thinking about late game like i was they're wanting to scrap here and now <laughs> yeah they are saying you know what this is an early game and cyberpunk otters are saying i don't care if we're off rolling we are going for this, and we're going to show you that we're not letting out. That was a beautiful rotation by Zelda, picking off that Poseidon in that fight with the Scylla. But then, again, Trixie Dream's awareness. First time we saw it, Zelda was at the purple, he took the red from Scylla. And now, he saw that Zelda dived on the Poseidon, so he dove on the back line to counter it with the Scylla. Yeah, definitely working out very well for Trixie on this call. Lee seems to have very good situational like map awareness here in the game Absolutely. so far. Looks like Trixie's gonna be confirming the blue buff for their solo laner, which will allow him to just kind of pull even further ahead on this pick. I mean, they're even in levels right now, but now that that Golden Blade is online, it's gonna be so much harder for Zelda to kind of keep up with the farm potential of Trixie who's now invading Counter the blue buff Again, and does get it successfully. Absolutely. Trixie is moving around this map. Zelda tried to get the purple again, but it seemed like, I'm not sure if he got it or not, it was a little too late, but he is ulting in, and it seems like he's going to come down on this. Founded archery was used as so low health bars for the Hachiman, but Twig will get the kill with the help of Zelda. He had a sliver of HP left. It was just one more auto needed out of Nova Shark, but good body blocks out of Zelda. Make sure that that does not go their way. Very great rotation by Zelda. He tried to initially, but now we actually have Kali jumping into the middle. Before we go on that note, Kali jumping in, and it seems like Kraken is going to come up and grab the kill on Scylla, but this fight is still going. Terra is chained by this Ares. They are trying to poke down. Uh, Poseidon is poking down with his auto attacks. Kali's trying to chase but it seems like Terra is going to be able to get out of that three-man gank right there in the middle. Yeah, good rotation in from Trixie as well. It seems like anytime Zelda does something on the map, Trixie is making sure to do something in return to constantly keep up with the early game pressure that Ratatoskers can provide. And over here, it's a good jump away by the Kukulin to avoid the execute, but he's still very low. He's got a level advantage over Paradox, but this Achilles just is such... A, a lane bully in a different way than the Cullen is and it seems like working out in Order of the Blight's favor in solo. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, around forward is going to be feeling this Kali stealing a lot of his farm, that blue buff and such. So he might have a level lead right now. However, it's going to start diminishing. This Paradox, we already saw he brought him one-on-one -on -one and he got to execute. Right now, Paradox is a little bit low on his mana, so he can't pull off that execute. But if he lets that build uh -oh. up but over here in the duo lane, it looks like they're going to tower dive. We have the ult from the Ishtar. They don't pick up the kill. And it seems like Hachime makes it out with just one health left. Yeah, that was very close. But in the mid lane, Trixie Dreams is the one under pressure. Gets hit by the Sikkim, rooted once again, but should be able to walk away without too much issue. But Twig lived with absolutely no HP over there in duo. Absolutely, which was... They committed so hard onto that. They were absolutely like, we are tower diving on this. And we have Zelda jumping down in the solo lane. He ults in. He does a round, dashes around. It seems like Zelda picks up the kill and dashes out, taking minimal damage from this tower. And they are going to pick up that kill 
on the solo lane Achilles. Paradox going down. But now we have a gank coming over here on mid. The support Terra is going in on the Poseidon, and Scylla is coming up to see how much damage she can poke out. Creep did get looked at there in the mid lane, but should be okay for the time being. It seems like action is mostly happening around the side lanes. We've seen the mids get active quite a bit, but in the past couple minutes, it's these side lanes that are getting kind of focused out at the moment for both of these squads. You know, we, did, we didn't get a chance to finish the thought. If if it goes 30 minutes, who do you feel like has the advantage? As we once again might not get to, I want to ask you this question, but Gold Fury <laughs> is getting looked at here just nine minutes in by order of the Blight. Nobody from the Cyberpunk Otters is anywhere nearby to even look at this. And this early Gold Fury is easily going to go the way of the Blight. Wow, that is one of the easiest first Gold Fury secures I've actually seen. Um, there was nobody contesting. I'm, I'm not even sure they knew that they were on it, honestly. But you know what? They're trying to group around here in mid. The Cyberpunk Otters are flexing a lot of different roles right now. And I actually have to commend them with how well they're doing um, with the situation that they have currently. Um, but over there in the solo lane, around forward is really holding his own against Paradox, which is very surprising. He's had a couple blue buffs taken away from him. We saw earlier that he actually stole the blue buff from Paradox. So when left alone, around forward is really putting some pressure over there, and that might contribute to a, a Cyberpunk Otters winning this late game. But it seems like mid winning. Whoa, Whoa and we got a Kraken taking out the Scylla. Yeah, where did Catboy's help <laughs> bar go? That was just so much burst damage coming out of Scary Creep. Definitely Absolutely. what Order of the Blight like to see in that mid lane, Ed. I mean, I imagine that's where we're going to see Poseidon bring time and time again from that mid-roll. Yeah, absolutely. And Zelda's over here, counter jungling, trying to take what he can um, every time, trying to take away a little bit of farm from these duo lanes. But we we talked about this, that their mid lane, usually Zelda is the mid lane over here. For Right now we have a one-on-one -on -one going on. I don't think too much is going to happen from this in duo lane. They're just going to poke each other and back off. But we've got Ares rotating over. Kali's at the purple, but Zelda is also coming into where this Kali is. This could turn into something as Zelda gets caught out, stunned by the Kali, has the Ratatoskr ultimate, but is oh. unable to get up into the air there. Nova Shark will get credit for the kill on the jungler, and that is just being in the wrong neighborhood, which is unfortunate for Zelda because that's his side of the jungle. Yes, yes it is. And he was just trying to counter this counter rotation over here and kind of trap him in there, but... It turned on him, and he actually got trapped on his side of the jungle, like you just said. And then also, Trixie was able to kind of go around and steal their green off of that as well. So that is a huge win for Order of the Blight. But now we got Poseidon getting jumped on in mid here. Terra and Silver are going to try and pick up the kill. I'm the monster Ooh. going down. He misses it, but Terra is not letting go. But it seems like they're just going to have to let this kill go off. That is such a shame to miss that, um, 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 that ult right there. Yeah, not what Catboy would have wanted, but... It has forced him back. They got the beads, and the beacon is up. Kali of Trixie, though, jumps in. The Kraken comes out, and again, Catboy is deleted off the map. Dave is doing everything he can to try and contest this beacon, but you need to be careful, my man. There are three members of Order of the Blight here at the beacon, and it's just Dave and Zelda who are anywhere nearby. Make it four members at the beacon, and this should just go the way of Order of the Blight, which will extend their gold lead even further. Now around 1,700 or so in the lead for this order side team. Absolutely. And this is what Order of the Blight has been doing so well. Look at them right now. Kali and Ares just rotating into the jungle of otters, taking so much farm from them. While Zelda's doing the same, Trixie Dreams has just been all over the map. And now they find the Scylla caught off at the red, but it seems like Scylla's going to burn a beads and not get stunned there to get out safely. This has been such an active game so far for 13 minutes in seven and five order of the blight 2000 gold lead what do you think so far oh, it looks uh -oh. like zelda is going to get up into his ultimate even though he's attached to the cherry's chains he's going to be able to get up get out and get the safety and he's diving down and he gets out safe but we got the kuka lane coming in take it away zelda yeah, he's walking forward, is around forward, but look at his health bar, it's melting. I'm a monster, just kind of tickles the health bar of Frag O'Clock. And around forward, tried to walk forward, but it's just not enough to do anything to the side of Order of the Blight. They'll be able to back up for 
the moment. I, I have a, I have a question about this build coming out of Trixie Dreams, though. Does he think he's playing League of Legends? Does he have the Gilgamesh passive? Wh what is he doing with all these uh, T1 and T2 items? All right, so I feel like right now he, he got the Golden Blade online because you want to be able to hyper farm as Kali, and he's found that a lot of success doing that. And that, oh, this is Bo. Getting the tier two just helps that farm and it helps in these team fights. That extra mm -hmm. damage can do so much as well, especially build up with his passive. So it seems like he's building a lot of tier one items to get some, a little bit of movement speed, but extra AOE damage since he's a single auto attack uh, god. But then he's building that kin size. So now he can start burning down these tanks that they have on their team. So we got a fight going on over in the solo lane where it seems like Cullen is poking down Paradox pretty well over here. But we got yeah, a rotation, the, a big rotation lane, going on in the left. Indeed, a lot of members of Order of the Blight are around here because the Oni Fury has respawned and is on the map and Order of the Blight are instantly wanting to go for that, except for Trixie Dreams who wants to go for the kill onto Catboy. No beads, no life. Scary Creep gets credit for that kill. The blue buff invade was successful on the other side, but blue buff for your mid laner and a gold fury might not be worth it. And it doesn't seem like anybody from the otters is going to be able to make it in here. Save maybe Zelda who gets hit by the blades of retribution and is unable to get that kill. Kraken oh. will not oh. let him get up into the branches either. In order of the blight, pick themselves up two kills and a gold fury only really losing their blue buff in trade. And Trixie dreams again, being able to grab all this extra jungle, even though we got the Terra rotating around, but doesn't seem like Trixie is too bothered by it with his build online right now with that kin size. He gets stunned. The Terra and the Hachiman are not going to let him up. He jumps over to the Hachiman. Hachiman dashes through. We got the Terra going, and Trixie dreams pops his ultimate just to secure himself to get out scot-free. Yeah, this is just a problem now. I mean, Trixie's level 14's got a level lead over their lane opponent in Zelda, but it could be even more of a problem for the Hachiman who has to get out. The blink chain is off the mark, but it doesn't matter as Nova Shark can step into the tower and get that kill onto Twig. They'll take the tier one tower as well. In order of the blight, now around 6,000 gold or so in the lead. They're starting to run away from way with this game. What do the otters need to do to kind of stim the bleeding and pull themselves back in here? I really think right now that the otters need to just farm up. They need to get some vision. One thing the otters have done great in their past games is their ward vision. But the thing is, Order of the Blight has been all over their side of the jungle. These rotations have been great. And it seems like we're going to get something going on in mid where this Poseidon oh, and Kali almost took out this Scylla. But Scylla was able to dash away and not take another death here. More fighting may be happening around that green buff pit, and it looks like Catboy is going to step back up to help out the Terra. They are able to secure, they are, excuse me, they are not able to secure their green buff. Even more farm getting taken away by this Order of the Blight squad. It's starting to look like it's hard for them to get any sort of farm if you're the Cyberpunk Otters because someone, whether it's Trixie, or anybody else on the team just always is at their camps. And speaking of Trixie, Catboy to use the beads and then still not enough again. He will end up falling to the hands of the Kali. The Pyromancer ends up falling to the hands of Order of the Blight. And they're just extending their lead even more. Seems like they're gonna but go they're for not this done. Fire Giant here. This is 17 minutes in and they're starting this up. They're already burning it down to around half HP. Does anybody from the Cyberpunk Otters even feel like they can step up? Nobody's local, nobody's around. They might not even know it's happening. Or even if I they don't do, they, they could not get into this pit cracking for the secure and an early Fire Giant goes the way of the Order of the Blight. Order of the Blight is playing these objectives beautifully. Whether it's knowing that the other team doesn't have vision, knowing that they just got a pick with that play specifically, Trixie Dreams made a beautiful play taking out the Scylla. And now we know the Scylla is already level 12 compared to level 17 Poseidon. So this Scylla is so far behind right now. So they were able to pick up that kill. And once they killed the Pyromancer, they were like, they have no secure. They have Zelda and Hachiman on the left-hand side of the map. This is a free 17-minute fire giant. They, how can you not take that? That's just... Ah, uh, oh, man. Order of the Blight is just doing an amazing job right now. They've gotten two Gold Furies for free. A Pyromancer and a fire giant 
Trixie Jeems is running all over their side of the jungle, picking off fights here. And now Cyberpunk Otters aren't letting up, which is good. But it seems like Zelda might actually is getting into a fight here. He's ulting up into this Ishtar. Oh no, Ishtar is so low, has to use the beads and the Aegis, but pop! Goes the Ishtar as Zelda lands down. Scary Creep, though, will get a double kill around the beacon, and Trixie Dreams gets one in return onto Zelda. This is just disaster if you're the Cyberpunk Otters, and it might get even worse as Dave has a sliver of HP left, is trying to make it out on the Terra, but it's a triple kill for Scary Creep, and Trixie's trying to get a double for himself. He'll get that kill, a delayed double kill, and a full deicide. Order of the Blight will get this beacon. They have the Fire Giant. This is just their match to win, their match to do anything they want to. They're pulling away. It's almost a 10,000 gold lead at this point. And you got Trixie Dreams, beautiful play, picking up that left tier two right now. It seems like mid is also gonna get this mid tier two. And I'm just, I'm, I'm confused because Cyberpunk Otters, they know that they picked up the Fire Giant, but they're still trying to fight them. They are so far behind right now. And Order of the Blight with that advantage of having Fire Giant buff, that is not a fight that I want to pick. I would have just gave away that uh, beacon that was going on in the middle and just try and keep your farm going up. Picking up these more and more deaths, this is not going to play out well for them. And this game is just going to keep rolling in the, in the direction of Order of the Blight's favor. Yeah, it seems like they might have been going for a bit of a Hail Mary play to maybe catch out Order of the Blight, but it did not end up working out for them there. And it's allowing Order of the Blight to kind of just walk around and sweep these towers, which you see all too often with that first Fire Giant. It's just about setting up for the next one to win with. But it looks like the Otters are at least going to try and turn around some gold back in their pockets with this Gold Fury, assuming they can pick it up. And they will be able to. But it, and you, all the while that was happening, they don't have any structures left. No, they don't. But I do respect that play by the Otters because oh. they finally were able to grab an objective. And it seems like this is where have they've... Maybe it's some miscommunication or maybe it's just the flexing of the roles. But Order of the Blight has been moving as a team for all of these objectives when they're popping up. They're not missing a beat. Cyberpunks is playing very reactive right now. They're waiting for something to go on, and then once they find out it's a little bit too late, they're trying to rotate it, and they're not going to make it in time that way. One thing that Trixie Dreams has been doing amazing is that he sees Zelda in an opposite side of the map. He doesn't try to rotate over last minute. He takes the, he takes the advantage that he has now on the other side of the map, and then their team has just been working together. So now we have the Pyromancer up again, so we might see them kind of push that they have so much pressure on their side of the map. Aerie's pulling the ult, but it seems like they're going to burn the beads with the Hachiman, and he's just going to dash out over here. But they're just, they have so much pressure all around this map. Uh, Cyberpunk Otters, this is going to be... They're going to need to have a very good defense here. Yeah, they are, especially with another Pyromancer going the way of Order of the Blight, so they'll add another Runic Bomb into their pockets to be able to do that true damage to these structures once they start to siege. How do you like the siege defense coming out of the Cyberpunk Otters as Zelda will hopefully be able to make it back and does not get hit by the change? Do you think they have the comp required to defend from this Order of the Blight squad? Uh, sadly, I don't know if they do. They have some good AoE damage here with the Scylla, which might be able to hold them off. But the way the, how, the Scylla's five levels behind level 15 right now compared to three level 20s almost a level 20 in the solo lane so these level differences i just don't think they're going to be able to defend too well um and especially the way order of the blight is making this team burn and we got a fight going over on in the fire giant side execute threshold was reached but kakulin is tanky enough to make it out for the time being so no blood spilt so far the kraken and mounted archery come through and the damage onto scary creep is quite a bit he has to use the beads and the agus but it's not enough that's a huge shutdown kill there for Catboy. but nova shark and trixie dreams answer back with two dave with a sliver of hp it's a double kill again for the kali nova shark trying to add another kill as well onto Catboy, who gains so many levels from that kill and trixie gets a triple kill on the Kali. It is around forward versus the world on the Kakulin. Seems like Order of the Blight should just be able to back up and take this fire giant for completely free 
off the back end of that fight because Trixie Dreams can just zone away the last remaining member of the Otters completely on their own. Absolutely, and I was actually surprised that he just didn't dive right there. The way that they have this lead, I saw. I thought he was just going to keep going in and try and pick up that <laughs> Theo side. But, I mean, this is Cyberpunk Otters. I appreciate how aggressive they're playing. We saw that there. You know what? Zelda is not letting up. They know they're behind, but they are still trying with these fights. And sometimes you have to do that. You can't just keep playing on your heels. If you play on your heels, they're just going to run you into your base, and they're going to take the take the, uh, take the the Titan from you. However, Cyberpunk Otters are showing that, you know what? Like, we're going to keep pushing on you. We're going to keep fighting you. And even if they only pick up one kill, that's still a little bit of a success for them. Um, but they, this defense that they're going to have to have coming up it's it's going to be hard for them it's going to be rough and zelda getting caught off by this Ares. we got trixie dreams rotating over oh no zelda needs to get out but he's unable to trixie will get yet another kill on this collie eight oh and five so far here in the game completely filled up on the build this i mean what what do the otters even do trixie dreams seems absolutely unstoppable and might continue that here as they rotate over jump in the crack and gets the knock up there's a lot of damage onto the side of the otters the aries chains will pull in dave on the terra there is literally nothing he can do he'll get executed by paradox that's another pick going the way of order of the blight and it seems like they're tired of wasting time they're going to start this siege off properly here and catboy needs to be careful uses that damaging ability but he's low health they have the bombs are due order of the blight and they will take that left side phoenix without any issue and they still have one bomb left so they did this perfectly they burn one down quick they're gonna use a second bomb get a second phoenix here and it seems like otters are gonna try and push a little pressure out but they're gonna keep rotating and get all three phoenixes in one siege most likely here but i cyberpunk otters aren't gonna let go right now they're gonna try and give some pressure but Wow, Paradox did a great job of just zoning him back. And now we got Trixie Dreams jumping in while we got uh, Round Forward stuck in the back line. Round Forward is going down. Trixie Dreams is diving the back line on the Titan, popping a roll, takes Twig down, and is still going on. We got Zelda up in the air in the ultimate, looking for somebody to drop down, and he drops down on three of them. Good stun, but the Kraken is even better, does so much damage. And this could just be the end order of the Blight with that kill onto Dave. There are just two members left. For the cyberpunk otters zelda and catboy need to do absolutely everything but the i'm a monster will not quite get the job done zelda gets one kill but where did the titan health go order of the blight take the convincing game one win here over the cyberpunk otters a great game for order of the blight you can't ask for anything better than that 26 minute game they ran this down they had control of all of the objectives. Look at Poseidon. We got 10 and 2 stat line on this Poseidon in mid. Poseidon literally had no problems at all. He was running into this Scylla, Catboy on Scylla in mid, and just popping him with all three of his abilities and just cracking him. This was, how oh, wow. What a great game for Order of the Blight. Yeah, and you know, we didn't, I feel like we didn't say Nova Shark's name quite as often as like Trixie or Scary. <laughs> but look at his damage 26,000 damage, top not only just on his team but top in the lobby he was absolutely swinging on the ishtar it seemed like order of the blight were just you know all cylinders just functioning as a unit so well together and there was just not anything the cyberpunk otters could even do about it absolutely absolutely trixie dreams was running around controlling the map from the very beginning we saw it zelda had a great play early on trying to take the purple he unfortunately did not get it but from that moment trixie dreams awareness has been spot on his rotations his counter jungling identifying where everybody is in the map and we talked about this earlier the warding the one thing cyberpunk otters needed to do to try and get back in this was get vision because that's how they were getting caught out they were getting caught inside their jungle sometimes because they had no vision anywhere and we see this playing out now that their vision their warding was a little low um all right yeah this uh do you have any last thoughts on this first game over here dr shrew i mean i i just want to see cyberpunk otters go back to the drawing board for game two and we'll have to find out 
how would they go to approach this to try and extend the set if you're the otters once we come back from a quick break don't go anywhere you're not going to want to miss out on this lance division matchup here on the csl
Welcome back, everybody, to this Lance Division matchup between the Cyberpunk Otters and Order of the Blight. If you missed it in game one, Order of the Blight kind of ran away with the game from early on with the help of Trixie and Scary Creep on that Kali and Poseidon, respectively. What do you want to see here, Chibi, come out of the Cyberpunk Otters to kind of mix it up and ha pull themselves back into the set? Is it bans or is it picks? Um, I'm gonna say it's definitely bands. Um, the, it, it's really hard because there's a lot of really good me meta mids right now. But Scary Creep on that Poseidon did so much. And I'm very happy to see Cyberpunk Otters banned out that Kali. They did not see it as a threat in the very first game, but Order of the Blight first picked that Kali. They put so much emphasis on it, and we saw why. We saw how Trixie Dreams was able to play so tactically on that Kali. He really played it beautifully, honestly. For the way you need to play Kali, you need to be running around. You need to be stealing farm. You need to hyper farm, like you said at the beginning of game one. And that is what he did. He moved around the map. He was never standing still. And it seemed like he was affecting every single lane. So now... Cyberpunk Otters are going to be locking in their first pick with Jormungandr in solo. Yeah, that, that was an interesting little ban phase there because the Bakasara and the Kali plus the Isha le left quite a bit open. The Otters prioritized that Jormungandr, but there's still quite a lot on the other side for Order of the Blight, like the Poseidon that you were just talking about. Scary Creep did so well on in game one. It seems like Order of the Blight agree that is something that they should be looking at and making sure it goes their way. So they'll lock that in for themselves. And this Thanatos hover or Trixie Dreams seems like the Otters were looking to ban him out. So I don't mind Blight looking to pick up his pick here early. Absolutely. Thanatos. Absolutely. And Thanatos in the right hands can be very dangerous. One thing Otters is going to have to do is they are going to have to pick their team so that they do not get trapped by this Poseidon now. That Poseidon, the way that we saw Scary Creep run his ults in that last game, they need to make sure they are not caught together, or else they will do it again. And I think Cyberpunk Otters picking Merlin is a great pick to kind of help with that a little bit. We saw last game they had Scylla. They both have an escape, um, but Merlin can get a lot more poke damage out than Scylla can. While he doesn't have the exact secure like Scylla does with Ama Monster, uh, Merlin has a lot more consistent damage and is a great mid. But Cyberpunk Otters is their first, their last of the top three picks. They're grabbing four. What a great pick, actually. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised. We didn't see Thor looked at at all in game one, if I remember correctly. And he's made it no, down here him. to the fifth pick of the draft. Thor is just one of those junglers that can Go bring ahead. absolutely everything you need. But one thing he struggles with is silences. He struggles against Ganesh. This is just great drafting coming out of Order of the Blight to immediately answer back to the Thor pickup by the Otters. Absolutely. Uh, and that is one thing you have to think about when you're picking up Thor. You've thought about all these different bands. You know, you, you don't want to play against the Marta Chorus. Trixie Dreams was great on the Kali. And Bakasora, you know, if he's good on the Kali, he's probably going to be great on Bakasora as well. Mm -hmm. But... You left Ganesha open, and you have to think about that. Ganesha plays great into this comp, and now Cyberpunk Otters, with their last two picks, have to think about that. But it seems like we got our last Dumb bands, Dumb Hachiman, Charybdis, Achilles, and Ishtar, but Order of the Blight, for their ADC, picking up Don Zaburo. I love this pick. It's not some. It's not a god we see often in the Season of Souls. Uh, no, Don is not. not one of those meta meta adcs like the rom that's been open rom. that the otters are going to go for but i think don's is such a fun pick what what do you think he's going to bring to this order of the blight squad oh well he brings cc as an adc you saw what they did last game with the ishtar and the Ares. they focused on cc and they're doing that again if you can't have ishtar who's another adc with great control crowd control don zaburo you can't really ask for more than that but on the other side, we got Rama picked up. On the other side, we got a lot of damage with the Rama coming over here. And they're hovering Maui right now. So this is going to... It's Cyberpunk Otters. They have another interesting team oh, comp. But I'm not sure times. how well it meshes Start all together. <laughs> yeah, this is... I, I like the draft from the Otters. Individually, all of these picks 
very Absolutely. strong right now. Jormungandr, probably, you know, one top one, two, maybe three soul laners at the moment. Merlin up there in the top mages. Thor up there in the top junglers. Rom up there in the top ADCs. And even Maui, who, you know, doesn't get as much prioritization as some other support picks. He's in a really good spot right now. He brings a lot to the squad. And yeah. it seems like the otters are going for, you know, a pick comp with their with their team. But I don't know how that's going to work into the the just high amount of CC, like you mentioned, that Order of the Blight has, especially when they add in a Horus, who's also so good at just controlling you. Yeah, and just seeing that Horus pick last just kind of made me laugh a little bit. They <laughs> went the exact same route they did last game. They are just... They are going to CC you down, and you are going to hope your beads are up. And if they are not, you better run. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a great. It's exactly what you said. Cyberpunk otters, individual pick wise, top of the meta picks for some of the best that you can get right now. Or the blight, they were like, we want to mesh our team together, and they want to control these team fights again. And I I think they might do that. It's looking at this team right now. Thanatos brings out a lot of damage and he can get an execute off or just an AoE stun if he wants to use it that way. Horus can bring the team in, but regardless of that, he's got a heal. He's got double CC build up in his kit. Now, this is going to be interesting. Cyberpunk Otters, now looking at their draft one more time, if they can chain off these block offs with his Maui ult and that Thor wall a little bit, they could be very dangerous, actually. If Maui gets a good old here, you know, really uses that to kind of shut down an exit, Thor blocks him off the opposite way, you got Jormungandr pools, you got the Merlin AoE damage, and you can just, whether it's Rama O or Rama just burning people down, it could actually work very well if they utilize it correctly. Yeah, I agree. I feel like the more I look at this honor squad, the more I think maybe they're the ones who came away better. They might not have all the CC and all the, like, combos, that the Order of the Blight squad has, but they have such good picks and the ability to absolutely shred objectives. They don't have the secure of something like a Kraken, but Merlin Rama is going to burn anything that's in their way. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like the Otters drafted a comp that could push us to a game three here. What I also really like is that if they get put on their heels again and they got to play defense, they have a better defense team now. This is a much better mm, yeah. team to play defense if they are stuck behind their Phoenixes. Well, there's only one way to find out, and it's to hop into game two here between the Cyberpunk Otters and Order of the Blight and see how everything actually ends up shaking out. Because we could talk about theoreticals forever. Let's just see what actually happens here in the game. And as we wait for the buffs to spawn, we can take another chance to look at some of these builds. And right off the bat, at least to me, a round forward going item before starter. I absolutely hate how that looks on there. And, <laughs> and I think I take, I retract all of my statements about the Cyberpunk Otters. Order of the Blight have this. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it never it never feels good. You see that and you're just like, wait a second. My brain is just instantly confused. <laughs> but we are, we're seeing Nova Shark go Boombas again. This has to be a consistent build for him. And you know what? I'm not going to question it because it worked last time and... Don't break it if it doesn't if it keeps working. So, yeah, I, I I agree. I mean that's it's it's an interesting decision, but it definitely did work out in his favor. So he's opting to go back for that once again. I don't I don't mind seeing it over here in the solo lane. Just more poking, like we're so used to seeing. It, you know, I, I, Jorman Gunder's such a lane bully, right? Achilles is usually seen as his kind of counter matchup. How does Horus kind of line up against Jorman the laning phase? This is actually one thing I wanted to bring up as well, so I'm glad that you questioned this. So, Horus is a hard pick against Jormungandr. You saw that they banned out the Achilles, which was smart because, like you said, Achilles is a counter to Jormungandr with his CC and then how Jorm takes extra damage. So they try to go down that same route with Horus, but Horus doesn't have the same uh, instant damage, but he is doing a great job. We have Paradox over here actually poking down around forward. Right here, round forward is actually falling behind two paradox on the Horus right now. Yeah, and I, you know, that that makes sense. He can activate the passive, but something that I did not notice until until just now, Nova Shark has the Poseidon. Scary creep 
has the Dons of Burrow in the mid lane. This is you... Poseidon ADC with the Bumbus Hammer and a Dons of Burrow in the mid. Do you think that this is just, you know, personal comfort, like player preference? Because we know Scary Creep can play with Poseidon. Why did they swap these picks and these in into the different roles? You know what? They, we've actually seen them do this before. So we've seen them swap before where Nova Shark took the Poseidon specifically in the ADC and he had an amazing game. But right now we got a gang, Zelda over in the solo lane. Trying to turn around some of this pressure, a good wall, good knock up. This could be trouble for Paradox. He's trying to make it back to the tower, but spin to win out of Zelda will be enough. And that's first blood going the way of the cyberpunk otters. But as you see, we got Trixie Dreams n identifying where Zelda is on this map, and look what he's doing right now. The same thing he did first game. He is taking away some of this counter jungle. Zelda's going to try and do the same. This is very good awareness for him to kind of see that we just got this kill over here. The buff's about to spawn, but it's not up. But look what Trixie just did. Took the white. While they're focused on their blue, he's stealing that from them. So it's a one-for-one, one, really, if you think about it. Actually, Trixie Dreams game out of life, but he is going on this Jormungandr. He is, but Sneaky Sneaky is around forward, and he's about to have the help of Zelda to try and make sure that no more happens. But it doesn't look like Trixie wants to give this up, yet the scythe is off the mark, and that should mean that around forward is able to make it safely back underneath their tower. Blue buffs traded out, as you mentioned. But I want to go back to this Don Zabura in the mid lane. You know, I Poseidon ADC, that's something I've, you know, I've seen before. He has that stim in the kit. I like that pickup. What is Don's a mid kind of bring for this order of the blight squad is it different than some what he would bring in the adc lane or is it just kind of you know we're going to get to the same point anyway i think it's a little bit of a flex play right here um they have they have the first game lead um he's trying to see what they can do they've done this before in a previous set and it worked out very well for them picking it into merlin is going to be a little difficult at least don Zaburo has that poke there especially when you start him uh with bluestone which he did not actually do which is pretty surprising to me. So by not having that blue stone, that does take away a little bit of your poke damage that you can push out. Um, so he's going to have some trouble as we are seeing against this Merlin. As long as Catboy just keeps poking him, keeps focusing on him, he should not let up here. You should punish that Donza Burrow, but it seems like Zelda's going to try and get a gank off in the left-hand side. Garmic Pillars does come out to slow them down, and it will be enough to make sure that Nova Shark makes it out. But Zelda's been so much more active on this Thor already here in game two. We're just four minutes in. He's got a kill for himself. He's been all over the map. Seems like much more comfortable on this pick than he was on the Ratatosker. And once again, a round forward is the one getting the advantage over here in the solo lane, just as you talked about earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. And I figured that the Horus, after they picked up that first kill, give Yorm just a little bit more of a lead. That That's exactly what he needed. But Thor cutting off this jungler, but we got mid and support rotating over. Zelda needs to be careful here. Gets taunted back in by Scary Creep. The silence is good from the elephant, but it seems like he's able to be safe enough for the time being. There was rotations coming in from the Otters as well. This is a much slower pace than we saw in game one. Seemed he like, is. you know, Zelda by the five minute marks, here. We, he is gonna continue looking. The Kraken is used, but he goes up into the Anvil of Dawn. Hovering Death is used as well and lands in the background, but oh. it's a two-man stun from Zelda. I said it was a quiet game and I just might have cast or cursed the entire lobby. Scary Creep gets a kill onto Dave. And now it's Trixie who's very low, but a good Darmic Pillars might have just saved his life and actually gotten Zelda in a lot of trouble. There's a lot of damage coming out from the Merlin and Zelda will be able to live all in all. It's just one kill going the way of the Order of the Blight there, but so many low health bars. That might not be just a one for not in the near future. No, and Zelda had a very hard decision to make there. When we saw, he went up into his ult, and that Poseidon got his ult off, but he was very low and trying to get out of that fight. When Zelda went up into his ult, he had to make the decision. My team is now stuck because their mid rotated, and our mid is not there yet, so I need to come in and stun to protect my team, or I can go on this Poseidon and pick up this kill. I think the better option was pick it up, but right now we also see a round forward might be getting cut off here. He is in a lot of trouble, wanted that blue buff, but now he's trapped between two. A good double knock -up. He's living for longer than I thought he would, but it seemed like that was a four con conclusion. Trixie Dreams will get another, well, his first kill, excuse me, 
on this Thanatos here in game two, punishing around forward for that aggression. Absolutely. And I, I just I want to go back to that fight that we had in the jungle. That was such right now. That was an unfortunate getting cut off by round forward. He's trying to keep that aggression going. He has a little bit of a lead and he might have lost it now. But I give him props for just kind of staying in there. But it seems like Ganesha mm -hmm. might actually get cut off now. But he's going to get out safe. This is still just going to be a little poke in here and there. But that fight before Zelda going up and solo lane going over here. This Yorm is just doing so much to this Horus. Yeah, this is definitely, you can see why the aggression came out of a round forward. He has so much pressure as the mid lane continues to poke out in at the same time. But this this Ganesh is already starting to, to kind of do what you want a Ganesh to do. We're only, you know, seven minutes into this game, but hovering death is gonna interrupt my thought as he lands on top of Zelda. Good use of the abilities there. Could mean death, but a hammer is oh. able to save him, plus the rotation in from Dave. Zelda will be able to make it out, but this fight not might not be over yet. Rotations in from multiple members. Tracy Dreams is very low. What a landfall out of Dave. We'll get that kill onto Trixie Dreams, who kind of overstayed his welcome in that green buff pit. But over in duo lane, we got Poseidon pushing into this Rama. Takes a lot of his health down, but he's not going to keep pushing for this kill. Just keep grabbing that farm. That play right there was all oh they're poking Ooh. down this merlin this merlin almost walked through the pillars and took his own life but it seems like he's gonna make it out with just a sliver of health left wow a lot going on just now <laughs> uh yeah. going back to that thanatos death right there thanatos thought he was free zelda was low which you would assume with the amount of health that he had left he was gonna back but zelda is not that type of player he is very risky and we saw him throw a hammer over the green wall, which took Thanatos to that one HP left, which giving Maui that kill. That was a great play by Zelda. You know, you always have to be aware of how much health you have and how much is going on. But what's going on in duo lane right now? Zelda's just walking up, gets the beads, but look at the damage coming out. Zelda will end up falling. The snipes have been good so far, but he's going to land in a world of trouble. Has a good rollout, though, to make it away. Dodges out the scythe, dodges most of the Kraken, but you can't dodge everything. And Nova Shark will get credit for that kill onto the ROM. That was aggressive coming out from the Otters, and they were punished for it again. Absolutely, but we might not see it done yet. Oh, taunted back in. Maui has to use the shell, but we'll be able to make it out. But here look comes Merlin the rocket the actually looking for the kill here as well. Gets the stun off. Darmic Pillar's not going to quite be successful, but a oh. long-range snipe from Trixie Dreams will be. He'll get another kill on this Thanatos. And Dave needs to be careful as well, but we'll be able to make it out. Uh, it seems like something switched and Order of the Blight are just so aggressive, but so is Zelda, he lands in. He will get the kill on to Scary Creep, but has to use the beads to make it out. He's an Execute Threshold though. What do you do from here? He actually has the Juke Boots. Good wall, double landfall. Whoa. What is happening? Here goes the Jormungandr as well. And now it's Trixie Dreams who's on the run. The World Serpent chasing him out. Do, do, does a round forward have the damage? He will just breathe on him until he dies. What plays coming out of the Otters right there? That is what we talked about pre-game. That is how they need to use this comp. You saw that. Zelda dodged the ultimate coming down from Trixie Dreams. You can't miss that. You cannot miss that if you're going to commit. But by Zelda dodged it, he got the sun off with the wall. Right after that, Maui pulled his ult, threw him into the tower there. With that Jormungandr rotation, it was a beautiful play by the Otters. And Jormungandr is not done. He's not. He's looking for even more damage on the Paradox, but we'll just live with the TKO. Around forward is already a menace right now. I mean, he's he's been a menace since minute zero with that with that starter to the item. But now that he's got some items online, he's just that one rotation kind of hinting what he could be able to do for the rest of this game. But the rest of the team that has to what has to happen now is we are seeing these level differences. Look at Otter's ADC compared to Order of the Blight. We have a three-level difference from Rama to Poseidon. And if there's one thing that we know about an ADC compared to a Mage, you have to have that lead. You're losing so much power. Right now, Poseidon has his Kronos Pendant and his Doom War built. And Rama is still building stacks on this, on this glove right now. This is not 
going to play well coming into these objectives that are going to start spawning. They are going to have so much pressure because this mage damage is so much more built than this ADC damage. And now we can see it right now. They're starting this gold fury. They are already got it to around half HP, but this time the otters are aware of the earlier gold fury pull. And Zelda will land into the back line, but not before Nova Shark gets a kill. The oh, Kraken oh, oh. in the Dharmic Pillars, nowhere to go for Zelda, who will end up falling at the same time. That's two down on the side of the Cyberpunk Otters, and this Gold Fury is started up once again. The Beacon is available. Seems like Order of the Blight is able to multitask and pull both of them as Gold Fury gets down to half HP. Twig does have the ultimate to try and steal this one away. He'll go up into it, but it's not quick enough. Does he have the damage to get any kills? Not enough on that either. Now the beacon might be the focus for both of these squads, but it's really just Dave who's able to stall this one out. Yeah, it horse doesn't look like Order of the want to, to rotate too many people into it though, because at least we have Catboy here to, to kind of balance out a rotation in. This beacon fight is extending further than I expected it to. And now Dave has to use the shell to try and make it out. That should just mean beacon goes the way of the Order of the Blight. They get two kills. They get the Gold Fury. Starting to feel like game one again. They're starting to extend this lead. Absolutely. And it's only 2,000 right now. You know, three kills ahead. But the way that they are controlling these maps, these objectives again, it... It's what they did successfully the first game, and they're going to keep running away with. And I have to contribute a lot to mid right now. And th this is hard. As Catboy, you know, you're coming in as a sub against Creep, who's been very successful this year, this season. Um, but Creep's rotations, when we see a fight going on in the jungle, Creep leaves mid instantly and goes. And usually Catboy is kind of slagging a little bit behind him, like trying to catch up. Um, so I think if this Catboy can kind of work on these rotations a little bit more, be more aggressive instead of um, reactive to them, then I believe Otters might be in a good position still, even though they're a little bit behind. They only have about a thousand gold difference right now. Um, even though they have these level differences and Rama struggling a little bit against this Poseidon, I think they can still be in a position to come back as long as they're performing. But we got oh, Ganesh no. coming in. Oh, no. Ganesh wraps around them, cuts them off. Pillars and the Kraken takes down the Rama. Yeah, nothing Twig could do there. Got caught in the Ohm, the Pillars, the Kraken, as you said. But he, you know, he's only level 12. He's 0-2 so far. If they continue to focus him out like that four levels down, it he's not going to be worth a whole lot. Who do you think the Otters need to focus on playing through to pull themselves back into it, considering Twig is kind of falling a little bit too far behind to be impactful until he gets some more farm on? Absolutely. Um, you, it really hurts to say, but you got to play around your jungle and your solo right now. You're diving back line because I think they're the only ones who are going to get you anywhere. With Rama being so far behind, it might not be worth a lot to keep killing him, but we see the Thantos coming in again for him right now because he might just be a free kill. And if you can just keep poking down this Rama, if you can keep making him push back on his heels, he's not going to be able to do anything. And that's going to progress into late game. And this Order of the Blight is just going to have a huge advantage. Well, they don't have the damage from the ADC. If we remember game one, Order of the Blight, who had the most damage? It was Nova Shark on the ADC roll. That damage coming from your ADC is so important. Regardless if it's a physical type or a magical type, it is so important for this endgame. You talked about when we were doing these, talking about these drafts, that Cyberpunk Otters had objective burn through the Rama and the Merlin. They don't have that right now because they put mm -hmm. down to me. And look who's getting another Pyro. Yeah, objectives going the way of order of the blight, except for the otters steal it away. I spoke too soon. Dave making sure that they get that one back. The Kraken comes out and does a bit of damage, but the world serpent flies through as well. Dharmic Pillars is used to try and slow them down, but look at Zelda's health bar. He's absolutely deleted, as is Catboy in the mid lane. It looks like the Otters are trying to turn something back around with their front laners, but oh no, a round forward gets taken out as well. Dave is alone under this tower, and I don't think he knows Trixie's behind him. Look out, Maui, you're in a lot of trouble. He's gonna have the jump to get over the wall, 
and he does turn around a kill actually the tower helping him out there and at least paradox will end up falling but dave is still under a lot of pressure that the scythe though might have been needed to make sure that kill goes their way and it seems like dave will end up living well that's a three for one favoring out order of the blight once again that is a three for one and we have to call out these supports frag and dave excellent gameplay from both of them you saw that maui steal with the ult right there and frag his rotations his pillars i mean this is what you expect on ganesha you know you have that secure you're able to just use it to grab kills here and there but dave on maui and it, the previous game one he was doing a great job in his role they're really doing all that they can and what they're supposed to be doing here and zelda goes in there he's able to steal a little bit of this green buff let's see if anything else kind of progresses because we do have the oni fury up right now the pyromancer is not even half back till spawn um how do you think this is gonna kind of play out we have a fight going on here in mid we got four of cyberpunks going in hey leia looks like the otters are trying to force a fight here and it works out in their favor catboy gets his first kill of the game on this merlin which is going to be very helpful in pulling them back in and they're diving underneath the tier one tower here the dharmic pillars comes out but it doesn't seem like the otters care they might care about this thanatos though who lands into the back line egg is needed there but dave doesn't have that layer of safety and he will end up falling the world serpent's gonna get the knock up and zelda's in the sky he does not fight, hit the mark but around forward will hit it for him he has to use the beads to make it out he will be able to make it out safely for the time being, but that's a big, big moment for the Otters. They lose their support, but they get two kills and a tier one tower. And now they're only around a thousand gold behind. But yes, Otters need to get out of here. They need to stop staying there. The Zelda needs to get out. So does Catboy, so they don't lose anything more. You have that Oni Fury up. You can't give it to them. And we see that Order of Blight is rotating for this Oni Fury right now. Great awareness by them. Yeah, and they'll they'll start it up. I don't think anybody from Order of the Blight, or excuse me, from Cyberpunk Otters is going to be able to do too much about it unless Twig decides to alt it, but this time he does not have it available. So that another objective, another gold and Oni Fear, excuse me, going the way of Order of the Blight. Seems like the Otters want to fight again, but Trixie Dreams is in the air. Was a defensive use of the alt, it looks like, as he's very low in the back line but it's trapped too in this Dharmic Pillars. The Ohm is so good, forces the beads and the flicker out. And it seems like Merlin will be able to make it out safely around forward though. The same won't be said for him as Nova Shark gets a kill with yet another Kraken. Up into the air goes Zelda. He barely makes it out of that fight, but will be able to retreat underneath his tier two tower. Seems like every time the Otters, you know, gain an inch, Order of the Blight just turn around and take a mile. Absolutely, and now the Pyromancer is about to spawn. They're going to be grabbing that again, going into their jungle, getting some more of this farm, building on that level lead that they already have. Cyberpunk Otters, they're going to try and stop it, but it looks like Blight is going for the early Fire Giant. It worked for them in Game 1. They're trying to make it work for them in Game 2, but once again, this time, the Otters are at least local. You need to look out as Trixie Dreams has the flank here. And now it's the Blight who are charging forward. Where did Dave's health bar go? He's getting melted, trapped in the pillars, and deleted by Nova Shark, which leaves the backliners on their own. Hovering Death is up in the air, and Catboy will get stunned. Catboy will get deleted as Nova Shark gets himself a double kill. But here comes the solo laner of the Otters. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to do too much more and will just back away with that world serpent they at least stopped them from getting the fire giant but they're just going to take this pyro instead yeah absolutely they got low health but it doesn't matter they can still tank this and oh looks like they're gonna push up they already got the pyro though so they're not going to be able to stop it but this is what we've been talking about order of the blight is just controlling and dominating these team fights you can't stop them. You let that Poseidon through again and look at what this Poseidon has done in a different role. First level 20 in the game. He is three wow. levels above anybody else in this game. He's got the Boomba Hammer already built. Like He is he's so dangerous right now. And that Rama is just pushed far behind. He's finally got the Quinn size built up. Um, but they are going to have such a hard time coming back from this. The Cyberpunk Otters. You already see that Order of the Blight is starting to put pressure around the Fire Giant. Look at the ward coverage as well. Not only are they starting to group up over there, 
but they are also, they have vision already everywhere on that side of the map. So now when Cyberpunk Otters come over to try and fix this, let's see if they can get through. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard battle for the Otters here as Fire Giant is pulled to around half HP. There's some D warding happening, but the Fire Giant's getting burned by the whole time. They'll pop the Frenzy. They mean to commit to this, and they're gonna make sure that they secure it there with that Kraken, but in the back line lands Zelda and the Jormungandr trying to turn at least a kill back in their favor, but it's not enough. Zelda will end up falling to Scary Creep, and more kills are gonna be going the way of Order of the Blight. That's another kill for Paradox on this horse, and now it's Dave and a lot of of trouble to the skies getting charged up where can the otters go to get away from the aggression coming out of this blight squad it's not there let me tell you that dave is now trapped between three and will get deleted and here comes the jormungandr who is trying to live trying to turn around some damage but his health bar is melting a double kill for scary creep and they're looking for even more charging towards this mid lane twig versus the world where can he go what can he do they will decide to let him live for the time being. Merciful, our Order of the Blight, and they'll take the Tier 2 tower instead. They're letting him live so they can just control more and more, but they notify, they saw those respawn timers. That was a great play by Order of the Blight. You know what? They could have tried to push more, but they knew that they had people respawning. Merlin was coming back up. They had uh, Thor coming back up, but that was such a risky play by Zelda. I know that they, they already killed the Fire Giant, and then he ulted in onto the back line. He actually got lucky that the Thanatos didn't miss his ult, and that might actually allow them right now, because Order Blight had the back, Cyberpunk Otters might be able to grab this Gold Fury. And we saw that last thing, but it seems like there's some miscommunication. They don't really know if they're tanking it or not. So back off of it while Order of the Blade is completely in the right side of the jungle. This could have been a free Gold Fury for them. Yeah, but now they need to worry about the defense. Looks like they're gonna back up. You mentioned on the desk they have a better siege defense. Do you think with the game state how it is, they'll be able to successfully defend these Phoenixes? Or do you feel like it's still gonna be a tall order? They need to get back on these Phoenixes. Order of the Blight has Fire Giant. They made this mistake in the first game. They knew they had Fire Giant. They still tried to pick fights when they were behind. You can't do that. And now we see this right now. Merlin is getting cut off and he gets picked off by the Gannett. Go ahead. Cannot make it back in and Zelda falls as well. This is disaster for the Otters who are now trying to just live underneath their Phoenixes to the skies and hovering death. Both land atop Dave who uses that landfall and has a sliver of HP left. Yorm is trying to zone them away from this Phoenix, but Order of the Blight just don't seem to care. They have lowish health bars, and they're actually trapped in that door. This could be trouble for the remaining members of Order of the Blight. Yorm will open the door, but Trixie Dreams will get popped. Dave gets another kill as well. There's two huge picks going the way of the Otters because there was no Phoenix down. That door can't open, and that's a successful defense for the Otters. There it is. That is the team comp we were talking about. And that was a great move by Order of the Blight. You know what? You lost two with Fire Giant. That is a huge loss. Get out. Pyromancer just spawned, and they're going to pick this up for free. Cyberpunk Otters can't defend it, but that is what they had to do. It is a shame that Catboy got caught off on that Merlin outside of the base. But if they are sieging, if they have Fire Giant, and if you are behind... You have to use your phoenixes. You need that extra damage. You need that protection there. And right now, the cyberpunk otters, the phoenix is up and they're pinging it. Why are they not on this right now? They had the pressure. They had the advantage. But now it's going to turn into another fight for this when they could have grabbed this bastion or this beacon. Yeah, they are going to have to fight a, without the help of that sixth man of the structure that the Phoenix provides. Here comes the rocket. A good flicker, though. Gets the Merlin out. Has to use the Aegis as well. There's so much damage. Catboy can't get, live through all of it. And neither can Dave, who gets executed by Trixie Dream Zelda with nowhere to go but out and has to retreat. The beacon, a foregone conclusion. Maybe, do you think Order of the Blight didn't get that beacon because they're making an end call right now? Oh, absolutely, absolutely they are. They're going to push in, they're going to take this mid Phoenix, and they're going to try and grab this Titan because there are three people up right now. But they do not know that this Yorm is behind them who might wrap in, but it might not even matter. 
He's going up into the World Serpent, but the Titan is losing a lot of HP. This is a hard task for the Cyberpunk Otters. The Snipes are slightly off the mark, and the Titan is below half HP. The Kraken will do even more. Scary Creek gets a kill, and the Order of the Blight will take the set in a fairly clean 2-0 over the Cyberpunk Otters. Wow. What great gameplay out of Order of the Blight. Cyberpunk Otters had a little bit of a better defense there, but it didn't matter. Order of the Blight just ran away with both of these games. Yeah, that was just absolutely great play out of Order of the Blight. It seemed like Poseidon, regardless of whose hands it was in, looked so good in this set. And Trixie Dreams, you know, might not have been undying like he was on the Kali, but still just did added so much pressure to the cyberpunk otters with this thanatos pick absolutely the cyberpunk otters were just too spread out they were too reactive in this in this entire set both of these games you could see it with order of the blight their rotations their grouping their calls and their vision for a lot of these objectives were just spot on while cyberpunk otters was just trying to play catch up too much they weren't really taking the initiatives. We didn't see the mid rotate like we did from Order of the Blight. We didn't see them take those fights to take those picks off. And they really needed that, especially with all of them flexing these different roles, with having some subs in for them. They needed to kind of like push the advantage here, and they weren't able to do that. And we talked about before Twig getting so far behind. Look at that damage difference. We got 10,000 from Cyberpunk Otters and 31,000 from Nova Shark on that Poseidon. Like you said, that Poseidon was a difference maker, and I'm a little surprised they didn't ban it out. While it's not a traditional ban, Order of the Blight has a history of playing that pick very well. Yeah, unfortunate for the Cyberpunk Otters with their, their need to pull in a sub and to, to switch around the roles, especially you know the week before play-ins where so much is on the line trying to set up for good seating. And try to continue your season didn't end up working out for them but they will still have chances to kind of you know answer back with their starting roster and try to move forward but congrats to order of the blight so that's an important win for them because you know as i said it's the week before play the final week of the regular season so they've catapulted themselves up a little bit further here in the roster and we'll have a better time moving forward as we get closer and closer to that you know playoffs and grand finals that is going to do it for us here for the first game today on the CSL. Once again, I have been Dr. Shrew, joined by Chubby Chibi with the ever-wonderful Soul Slaw on production. Stick around. We'll have more games coming to you in just a little while. But for now, that's going to do it. Have a great day, everybody.